Okay, we're here with Matt Locke from TI. Matt, tell us about um, what your role is in TI and how you're connected to Lenaro. So I'm the director of the Linux Development Center at TI. My team is responsible for defining what we do in the software, getting it implemented, and getting that code into the upstream Linux kernel. How many people? How many people? Roughly about 70 people. That also includes the Pandaboard team, so we're responsible for designing our low-cost community platform that we try to get out to the developers so they become OMAP developers. And only the software or hardware design as well? Uh, mostly software. Right, mostly software yeah. based. Okay, so you guys have been founding members with us and like the and board members as well. Um, I'm curious, though, how how's it gone for TI? Like, what's what's experience been, in particular for the SINES people that work with me? I think it's been very good. We've had uh, a transition in TI to become more focused on Linux and the open source community, and not everyone within my team has had the exposure to Linux right. or the community. So, right. so you have people coming in from other areas, from other operating systems from other areas, right. that need right. to spin up. So it's been good for them to come together in a place where they can learn about the community yeah. and Linux from experienced people. Uh, we had one example of our assignee. Uh, working on a uh, technology called DMA Buff, uh, where he had a, a little bit of Linux experience before, but not too much. And now he, with, through Lenaro, became a major contributor to the Linux kernel and is a maintainer of this. This is Sumit. Right? Yeah, yeah. He became uh, uh, one of the maintainers of a core Linux kernel technology. Right, DMA Buff. And how, how are we going to use DMA Buff now? DMA Buff is uh, one of the key pieces to create a, a way to uh, have a standard memory allocation interface for the graphics and, and multimedia subsystems. Right. There's been a very discontiguous, if you will, um, yeah, yeah. pardon the pun, to uh, <laughs> way of allocating memory for those for those subsystems and being able to be used by the different user space uh, components. Yeah, when I talk about it, I usually say that it's like the it's it's the path forward for zero copy. Because if DMA buff right works works properly, then you can have memory allocated once and then all the subsystems use it at once. Exactly. Which is something which is very cool about ARM actually because you have this this um, unified memory system where zero copy is, it's, it's designed for zero copy, right? Because everything, GPU, CPU, the co-processors all talk to main memory. That's right. Yeah. So speaking of that, um, TI has this new OMAP 5 out now. It's our latest generation of OMAP. OMAP 5 is coming out. It's a dual A15 with some cool peripherals on it. Um, and one of the things we've been working closely in, in Lenaro and, and in the community is to get the, the path set up so that that, that processor can be accepted in the ARM community. So, what, so tell me about what's interesting about the, the CPU. There's two A15s. I know there are two M4s as well, right? Right. So one of the delicate balances in the, in the ARM SOC space is power performance. Right. What's the best optimization and use of the different cores available to the SOC manufacturer? And then what do you do with it? So one of the things that TI does is use the dual M4s as an offload engine for multimedia and uh, camera. Right. right. So we take the, put some specialized software onto the M4s and be able to offload a lot of the multimedia operations to there. So it's very much like a software hardware accelerator. Right, right. And so both encode and decode? Yes. Right, cool. What are, what are the things that are interesting that come on this SOC that uh, we don't know about? One of the new things coming out is uh, USB 3. Right. And we actually did a lot of the USB 3 uh, development pre-silicate. Right. So we took uh, the IP block, dropped into an FPGA, yeah. uh, did the development, and submitted the code upstream before we even had the hardware for it. And, but using what CPU to, to connect that to? Oh, it was on a PCI card. Ah, right, so you right, just right. stuck it in your development PC, got the, uh, the stack all developed, and put a little layer in there saying, uh, stick ARM stuff here when, <laughs> when we're ready, and then started filling that in as we got closer and closer. To that's, that's very cool.